All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Michael Goldberg coming to you live from Isolation Headquarters in Dallas, Texas. And uh, welcome to the LinkedIn Live Lunch Hour Special Edition with the YouTube man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Scott Simpson. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? You know, I am doing great. It is, uh, it's Friday. It's going to be like any other day. Tomorrow and Sunday is going to feel like a Monday or Tuesday, <laughs> but it's going to be great. Uh, at least the weather's been nice enough to at least get out and walk around and uh, not in groups, but just kind of walk around the neighborhood, get some exercise. And that helps a lot. Right. So my right. advice and, and, uh, is if you feel cooped up, get out of the house. Just don't go in a large group of people and walk with people. Just go on a walk and you'll feel better. Hope everybody's doing healthy and uh, or is healthy and is safe uh that's that's the key here so uh today we are going to be talking about quite a few things we're going to be talking to scott about uh youtube because he is mr youtube i'm i prefer on the linkedin side and so we'll talk about the differences on both platforms um because he does do some uh, great video uh, pieces on linkedin we're going to talk about video marketing world, which he is the CEO of, uh, and talk about this great conference that I actually discovered last year. Of course, it's going to be virtual this year. And uh, and then we'll riff on whatever we want to keep going on. Right, Scott? So, Sounds good um, to me. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll kind of j uh, dive in. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, I actually have a background in financial services, insurance and financial services. I was a uh, Series 7 and 66 licensed uh, financial planner back in 2007, uh, right before the crash. And then the crash hit. And I was like, you know what? I got to do something else because this is not good for my health. And uh, and so I, I moved to – I'm getting some feedback here. Hold on just a second. Let me, let me mute. I got to mute something here. Or did you do the YouTube? Did, was the YouTube volume up? Because I know Maybe you're going to answer did. questions on YouTube. Yeah. And I'm going to answer questions on LinkedIn. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so I, I got out of financial services. I moved here to Dallas. And then um, my wife and I wrote a couple of books. They were personal development in nature. And we started speaking on those books, the principles in those books. So we go to businesses and organizations and in schools and and really just try and teach people that they were capable of doing things that maybe they didn't think that they were capable of. So in, in 2014, my wife was uh, pregnant with my son and we decided, you know, maybe it's better that we just stay at home and, and not do so much traveling, not go around and speaking to these groups. And th so we, we took our message and put it on YouTube and, um, and slowly but surely that, that turned into a business. I mean, it was, you know, we we would uh, we'd get ten video or ten views on a video, and be like, okay, you know, that's like a room of ten people, and then we get a hundred people on a video who are watching our videos. And we're like, oh, that's a pretty good size room, you know. Then we get a thousand and five thousand and ten thousand. We're like, this is a bigger audience than we've ever spoken to live. Let's keep doing this, and uh, and so we doubled down, and and um, I brought ended up bringing my whole family on our YouTube channel, and we turned it into a family vlog with an emphasis on personal development. And, and here we are now, you know, we got 300 and 330,000 subscribers, had over 120 million organic views, and we've really just taken off with it and turned it into a business. And then um, last year, I took over Video Marketing World, and, and, uh, and it's been an awesome experience. I've gotten to, to work with businesses and teach them how to, how to use YouTube and, and social video to grow their business, get more clients, get more leads, sell more products. And it's just been a wild ride, you know, and here, here we are today. And I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm so glad I got on YouTube because everybody's watching YouTube. We, we've doubled our views in the last few weeks. Uh, you know, I, again, like I say that and I'm like, I, I feel, um, you know, my, my heart goes out to the people who are struggling right now that I, it really does. Like I, I don't mean to lighten that at all, but, uh, but it's for people who are online doing business online. It's, it's been great. That sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it? It has. And I think, you know, no, it doesn't. No, 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 no. I mean, hey, 
look, if you're okay. if you're making money, people are watching my some of my stuff. They're not watching. I'm not getting 130,000 followers, but uh, it's not about. So and, and so that's a good that's a good segue. Is it about the followers, or is it about the quality of the content in your in your mind? So that's a really good question. I think that um, I think that it, it's about the value that you're offering, um, because if you're pr- producing value and you're passionate about what you're talking about and you know what you're talking about about and there's a market for what you're talking about, then there will be an audience that's there that will come to your content no matter what it looks like, um, as long as they perceive that it's valuable to them right now. Yeah. And, and, and that's the, so that's the thing. So if the information you're putting out there and people are watching your videos, information is helpful to your viewers and you happen to be able to monetize that in some form or fashion, then, Hey, kudos to you. Other people need to, need, need to, need to learn from you and, ha- and having to, having to do that. Look, look, I, I'm in the recruiting business and the TA business, you know, you you know, your world is about video. And so what makes us both unique is, is we each bring that special quality uh, and superpower to the table for our viewers. And those who choose to listen uh, are going to learn something. And those who choose to just kind of go, okay, sure, whatever, um, that uh, that's fine too. And I'm, I'm down. If I had 10 people that were like, you know, that were my, were my, uh, what do they used to call the rock and roll, the roadies right. or the people that used to follow the, they used to follow, you know, all the rock stars in the 1970s. Um, I forgot what they called them. Did you, didn't you ever see that movie almost famous? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I remember that. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. You I know what I'm talking that. about, right? So the yeah, group I know what you're about. hangs out. And yeah. The super fan. Cause yeah. All right, all right. the super. You don't want to say groupie. Groupie's not, uh, groupie's probably not a good word, right? <laughs> Is that yeah? It's probably bad. Yeah, no groupies. No, we're not allowing groupie at all. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but but when you when you you know the now that it's starting to catch on, and you know last year at the conference, let's talk about video marketing world. So last year at the conference, um, I went because Fanny Dunnigan said, "Yeah, you should totally go to this. You'll learn more about video." Uh, at the time, she was my coach, and she was helping me. And she goes, this will really kind of help solidify this. And I got to meet you, own video. Um, uh, Seth, I'm blanking on Seth's last name. Uh, who Matt does a lot of YouTube, has over five or 10 million followers. Oh, Scott. No. Um, Tim. Tim Schmoyer? No. No, I oh. think it was Seth. Seth, somebody. It may be Scott. It may um, be Scott. Evan Carmichael. Um, Evan Carmichael. That's it. Just like okay. Scott. Evan Carmichael, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, but you know, you had Judy Fox up there talking about LinkedIn. So, uh, let, let's. Let, I learned so much at that conference, and I'm on this mission to help grow that conference for you, because I believe that TA professionals once we get back into the rock and roll world that we're living in needs to put themselves out there more on video so that um, uh, now and certainly if you want uh, if you want tickets uh, feel free to dm me on uh, or just reply or, yeah, uh, send me information about this uh, video conference. So I'm going to shut up and let you tell everybody what Video Marketing World is, why it was created, and how it's helped, you know, hundreds to thousands of people that have uh, attended over the last several years. Awesome. Yeah, you know, Video Marketing World was initially created to help business owners learn video so that they could take that information and grow their business and get leads. Just kind of like what I was what I was talking about, uh, you know, when I was introducing myself. The, the mission of Video Marketing World is to teach video not just to creators, you know, people who want to become full-time YouTube YouTubers or YouTube influencers, but to people who can use video 
to grow their business. You know, one of the one of the mm-hmm. biggest reasons I advocate YouTube so intensely to business owners is because YouTube is a search engine, right? You could be on LinkedIn, you can be on Facebook, you can be on Twitter and TikTok, but what happens to your content after the day that you post it? It it falls down. You got to do the whole mile long scroll in order to find your content. And so once your video is viewed, it's very unlikely or, or once your video is uh, is is done being promoted by Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those other platforms, mm-hmm. it's um, it's very unlikely that's going to pick up m- many more views. Whereas with YouTube, you could post a piece of content today and 10 years from now, it'll still be getting views. Some of our biggest viewed videos or most viewed videos um, are still getting 10, 15,000 views a day. And I posted them in 2015. You know, our, my biggest video has 30 million views and, uh, and we're still getting 15 or 20,000 views a day on it. So th- that's the power of YouTube. That's why I advocate YouTube. Now you think about that in terms of like a business, uh, say you're a, uh, um, yeah, say you're a, uh, an, an auto mechanic and you have a tool that you just love. And so when you're pr- producing videos on YouTube, talking about this tool and you've got a link in the description for it. Uh, every single one of those videos um, has the potential of catching fire, becoming evergreen content where it just lasts forever. And so you could produce a piece of content in 2015 that continues to sell products for years and years and years. So when I'm working with clients, that's what I'm, I'm teaching them to set up is, is not just how do I become famous on YouTube? How do I get a lot of views? But how do I build an empire with YouTube and uh, and how can I make YouTube the centerpiece of my entire content marketing strategy? So, so, so uh, let, let's talk to I me mean, because like, like you, you know, that I'm, I'm huge LinkedIn, but, and, and one of the things that Evan, uh, Evan and I talked about in our short video was, you know, and he said this on stage at the conference last year, start with your platform that you're most comfortable with. Uh, and then, and if it's working, that's great. If you're getting the views, if you're building the, you know, building up the algorithms on that uh, social media channel of choice, uh, then spot on. Uh, my question to him was, well, when is it time to make that change or to branch out to another one? So I'd like to get your opinion on that. And then, you know, our CEOs, COOs, you know, for my, let's say for my, from a recruiting standpoint or, you know, I do more recruitment consulting, uh, but are CEOs and CFOs and COOs looking at that more than they're looking at LinkedIn? I'm curious. Looking at uh, YouTube? Looking at YouTube more than they are LinkedIn. So from a, from, from a business standpoint, I think that LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. Um, mm-hmm. I think that LinkedIn is a way to keep yourself front and center in the business community. And, and it's effective, you know, it's, it's building, it's growing. Um, there's a lot of users on LinkedIn right now and mostly in the, you know, obviously all in the business, uh, category, but, um, with YouTube, YouTube is more about creating series of valuable content where LinkedIn is you create some of that content as well. Um, but, um, but it can be a little bit more with LinkedIn. you, You can, you have a little bit more broad flexibility. YouTube for a business owner is where you go as the, as the brain surgeon, you go as the super specialist, and then you create Mm -hmm. content on a highly focused category uh, that you're passionate about. So say, you know, you're a, um, let's use the same example. You're a car mechanic and um, Mm -hmm. you know, you have your LinkedIn profile and you could produce some content about being a car mechanic, but you could also produce some content about being a business owner. You can produce content about, um, you know, about, uh, um, financial well-being. There's a whole lot of, a lot of things that you can produce content on, on LinkedIn, and you're most likely going to get the same audience over and over and over again with YouTube. It's like Roger Wakefield, it's like Roger Wakefield right? And what he did. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Roger, you know, and, and he speaks on a variety of different topics now on LinkedIn when he does his LinkedIn lives and he interviews people and talks about all certain things. But when he's on YouTube, Roger talks about plumbing. And, um, and so when you're on, when you're on YouTube as a, as a car mechanic, you go a mile deep in in one subcategory of your category. So if you are the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, 
the dent remover, right? You talk about how to remove a, a dent out of your door panel on a Dodge Durango, how to remove a dent out of a door panel on a Toyota Camry. How to, and you go, you go a mile deep as the dent person as in auto, uh, as a car mechanic, and you become the expert of that one subject. And the more expert, the more uh, expertise that you can build, um, the easier it will be for you to grow. Now, when you grow and you've got 30 or 50 or 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, then you could branch out and start doing things a little bit more broad because you've got a core group of, of super fans that will watch any of your content. But when you're starting, you become the master of one subject and that's how you grow. And um, yeah, and that's how you, yeah, that's how you grow quickly. So if, so if I'm uh, doing what I'm doing, right. So going in and helping companies uh, and then if I wanted to, you know, during this kind of period of time, helping train them and, and kind of, you know, tool up uh, as we prepare for the rebound, whenever that's coming, um, would I then go to YouTube uh, and do either YouTube recorded or YouTube live on with my screen share, showing people how to research uh, research companies uh, that happen to hire the same type of people that uh, uh, that, that I do. So, with, is that how it's done? Does, yeah. does my question make sense? <laughs> I, I think so. I think I'm getting it. Yeah. So you would you would create content. I wouldn't do um I wouldn't build a YouTube channel based off of YouTube Live. Um, but you would create actual video content that are edited and, and the pieces are edited and put together in a way that, that makes sense and has an easy flow and you know you can get everything you need to said in five to ten minutes and uh, and then create series of videos that are based on a subject at a time. So talk about how to do research. I, I don't know the recruiting industry as well as you no, do. No, I don't know like just... the subcategories. But again, it's it's finding those subcategories in your industry and then going a mile deep with it and then cre and then having another subcategory going a mile deep with it and then building your channel out with subcategories in mind. And then starting a new topic and doing the same thing. Yeah. So is it – so how long should those videos be, right? So LinkedIn, it's like – you know, really no more than a minute and a half, two minutes. You know, some people do post their five to seven minute videos on LinkedIn, but they're not getting watched. Uh, and they count a video being watched after three seconds. On YouTube, what's the average length of a video? And I understand you can go an hour if you want to, um, but what's the average attention span of a YouTube viewer? Uh, is it the same as a LinkedIn viewer or a Facebook Live viewer or something like that or no? So it's a little bit different with YouTube. YouTube is, YouTube is a video sharing platform. LinkedIn has video available, but it's not a video sharing platform. That's not why people go to LinkedIn. They don't go to LinkedIn mm -hmm. to like be like, hey, I, I want to look at some videos today. You go to LinkedIn to see what other people are doing, what's happening in the industry that they're following. Uh, if a video pops up, maybe they'll watch it, maybe they won't. YouTube has specifically trained their audience to watch videos for long periods of time. And they mm -hmm. reward... Uh, channels that have episodic type of content, content that leads to the next video, to the next video, to the next video. So YouTube is all about uh, session time, right? How long can you keep somebody on on uh, the YouTube platform? And if you create videos that keep people on the YouTube platform for long periods of time, YouTube rewards you for that. So as far as an Average video, I can't say what an average would be. It, it, it's probably between the 8 to 12 minute range. Um, but you can have a winning channel with uh, five to, you know, four to six minute videos. You can have a winning channel with uh, 10 to 15 minute videos. Anything much longer than 15 minutes, I think, unless it's really good or very uh, engaging, it's not going to do super well on YouTube. Um, for most categories. So when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, what we'll typically start with is like the four to six minute videos to really button up their show format, create something that's a really solid piece of content that's, that flows uh, smoothly. And then as they're developing that core audience, then we start to increase the time so that way they can get up over the 10 and 12 minute mark and get the extra ad rolls, you know, the, the mid-roll ads that come in mm -hmm. so they can increase the revenue that they're getting. 
and um, and then you know build their channel up from there. Dumas Simpson, he is a YouTube professional YouTuber and uh, an amazing human being. And uh, uh, feel that. free, to, uh, Azzy, absolutely. And feel free to ask us questions. I know Fanny has been, uh, Fanny Dunnigan's been saying, hey, Roger Wakefield, they're talking about you. Trevor Houston, who's with the Who You Know <laughs> show, uh, uh, she did a shout out there. Fanny says, you two rock. Uh, uh, if I mispronounce this name, I'm very sorry. Uh, Gerald Knight, Geraldine Cecilia, thank you very much uh, for for joining the broadcast. Uh, and just say hello if you can. We want to hear hear from you. And um, let's 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 change topics a little bit. So one of the things that uh, I'm starting to see an uptick in uh, from a video perspective are these. Uh, virtual happy hours like one that I did last night that I'm going to do every going forward now every Wednesday at 530 central time. So and anybody can join, but it's it's bringing in that sense of community as we're all kind of locked down in our homes or not locked down, but we're sheltered in place in our homes. Um, what, what What's your take on this? Are we going to I'm worried we're going to zap the Zoom out of Zoom, uh, you know, in terms of their in terms of their bandwidth and their space. I mean, there's just you're already starting to see companies like Spectrum and Time Warner Cable, Cox Communications. They're having trouble keeping up the bandwidth demand from everyone that's working from home. What do you see as we're kind of in these different times? Is there going to be a problem with that? And is maybe YouTube the way to broadcast your messages out there and LinkedIn, et cetera? So, yeah, it's interesting you say that. A couple of things, right? We're really testing uh, our system with what's happening. Like, we, we've never gone through something like this before. And so now it's like we are putting the Internet to the test. Can it withhold everybody in the world on the Internet all at once? And, um, and you know, YouTube and Netflix, they've had to slow down their, um, you know, their, their streaming HD channels. Didn't yeah, they get they, rid of their HD channels? Yeah, they did. They lowered the resolution in Europe because of the bandwidth issues, and and so I think that you know we'll we'll see some more of that. But have you seen the the memes that have been going around? That the one that's uh, the Scooby Doo that's like who's really behind the coronavirus? And they pull the mask off, and it's and it's Zoom, right? And and uh, yeah. um, and it, what, you know, go to meeting and WebEx and yeah, but you know. Buy some stock in Zoom right now, man. I mean, they're, right? They're no they're kidding. going crazy. Yeah, they're they're really benefiting from this. No uh, kidding. You know, I have been I've been thinking about this a lot lately, right? What is most what what is what is on people what is on people's minds the most? And I think that what's going to happen is as soon as the economy gets started again. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to see kind of a, a mini mass migration to the internet for jobs. There's going to be a lot more people who are going to be working remotely because, um, you know, infectious disease and, and pandemics, they're inevitable. They're going to happen. Uh, this isn't going to be the last time it happens. And, and I think that it's probably going to end up happening more now because, because really it's being politicized and used as a weapon. And, and that's scary. You know, I don't, I'm not going to put my, my tinfoil hat on too much, but, it seems to be that, you know, once something is politicized and used this way, uh, it resurfaces because it's, you know, now, it's now a tool in the belt. So my thought is that there's going to be a lot more people who are going to be wanting to do business online. And so um, services like Zoom, um, you know, go to webinar, uh, um, be live, you know, a lot of these other services where you can connect and, and use these programs to broadcast and, and to uh uh, to still have a sense of community and, and have, like you said, your, your happy hour events and things like that. I think they're going to mm -hmm. just keep going up because people are going to realize that they were still able to do their jobs remotely. And everybody wants to work. You know, there are very few people who are like, yeah, I, I want to take a three week vacation with, with my kids stuck in my house. Right? It's like, I love right. my kids. Um, but it's like, be spending 24 seven with them for three weeks is it's hard. It's not, it's not all it's like crazy. rainbows and, and butterflies. Have, and yours are all like under the age of 10, correct? No, I have a, I have a teenager and a, and a, a 12 year old and, um, okay. and then I've got two littles. Yeah. Five okay. and three. So, yeah. but still, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's hard. Like 
being um it, it's hard being the like you know this i don't know how to say this like it, it's 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 difficult uh when you don't feel like you're producing value and you know a lot of us our identities are are tied up in what we do for a living and if i'm if i'm not working i feel like i'm not contributing positively to the society or for my family and so it's uh it's you know that's that's difficult for a lot of people right now so anyway my point is i think that there are going to be a lot more people who are are working remote and finding ways to do their jobs from various locations well my uh kind of Nostradamus prediction uh, is going to be that people will finally now prove that with tools like a Yeti microphone, a Logitech HD camera uh, with laptops, uh, that those, they won't need to go back into the office. Now, the big thing is management trust and allowing their workers to have a, uh, you know, have a, 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 uh, uh, just a sense of opportunity to be more productive, be more creative because they're not having people, they're not being interrupted by phone calls or being interrupted uh, by people stopping by their desk to say hello or to ask them questions. So my prediction is that the commercial real estate industry is going to suffer a little bit because we're, we're employer employees are going to rebel against their employers to say, I had to work from home and I was twice as productive, got more, more, yeah work done, found more people, whatever you do for a living. Um, so that's, that's my prediction. And I, and, you know, I think these co-working spaces, you know, are they going to be still around? I, I don't know, but the beauty is, is that we can, you and me and anybody that's watching this or anybody that watches on the rerun, we can now produce videos from home. We can do a lot of things out of our homes. So that's just my, my two cents. All right. So I got a question here yes. from uh, my friend and partner in crime up in uh, the Massachusetts area. Uh, Mr. Michael Neese, hello, and thanks for joining us. He goes, what are the key settings to include when setting up a YouTube channel for a business? The key settings. Um, like, what so, are the keys? Keys to success, Michael, if you want to clarify, uh, let us know, but. Yeah. So keys. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you some keys to success while Michael is, um, you know, if he wants to clarify that a little bit more, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, you know, the keys to success are making sure that you um, uh, making sure that you have a category that is in demand for one. And, and almost every category is in demand as long as you know what you're looking for. So one thing that we see a lot of people make a mistake, make mistakes with on YouTube is that they get on YouTube and then they start creating content based off of things that they think that people are wanting uh, rather than actually doing the research and finding out what people are looking for and then creating content based off of that. So for example, like it, it, a lot of creators will get on, um, will get on YouTube and they'll, they'll be like, huh, you know, I'm thinking that I want to make a video on this today uh, because it's been on my mind. We, and then without really putting much thought or research into it, then they create that piece of content and it falls flat. And then they're like, they're like, hey, look, YouTube failed me. It's not giving me any views. But in reality, nobody was searching for that content. And, uh, and so it failed because of a lack of research. So one of the biggest keys to success on YouTube is to research what people are looking for and create content based off of that. And you'll see a lot of that. You know, that could be trends. It could be... Um, you know, things that are happening, like right now, obviously, coronavirus is a huge topic on YouTube, 14 million monthly searches right now um, for coronavirus related content. But, um, you know, there are tools that are out there that allow you to type in keyword uh, phrases and, uh, and then come up with lists of uh, topic ideas that people are actually searching for. So I say research big time. And then Oh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Roger, just uh, Mr. Wakefield, thanks for joining us. I'm honored to have you on watching. He says research is the most important. Thanks. Yep. So awesome. Packing, packing you up there. So when you say research, what, what are we what are we supposed to be researching? The the topics that we're going to talk about, the information that we're putting out there. What are what are some of the key areas of research that we need to be focusing on? 
Yeah, so what we're searching for is uh, you're researching the keywords that people are actually looking for. So like if somebody is looking for, so so for example, um, I can't screen share and I don't want to, <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to, you know, go through a long uh, run out boring thing. I can screen share if you want. I'm no, right. it's okay. It's okay. Um, essentially like, so I use the vidIQ keyword research tool. And the reason that I use that is because when I search a topic, it will come up with a list of related keywords that are all somewhat related to that topic or they're based off of what people are searching. They're, they're searching for coronavirus, but they're also searching for clinical trials and they're also searching for uh, vaccines and they're also searching for how can I how can I um, survive coronavirus with vitamin C? You know, like all of these things that are kind of hot button topics right now. So just having that information of, as to what they're searching for allows you to make informed decisions on what you should base your keywords on, uh, what you should base your title, what keywords your title should be based on that have the best opportunity for success as you're moving forward. So Michael, the guy who asked the question and myself, yeah. we're both rec recruiting and interviewing. Um, you know, like I told you before we jumped on the call that I'm going to help small to medium sized businesses focus on succession planning and help them build out those succession plans and long term workforce plans. So we would go to vidIQ to research what those keywords of what people are searching for. Is it going to spit out those keywords or is it like almost like going to going to Google AdWords and doing the same kind of thing uh, to to get more information how would like how would, am i making sense yes yeah so what i would do is i'd go to vidIQ and the first thing that i would do is uh, i would type in business recruiting into their keyword tool mm -hmm. and uh and then it'll give you a list of keywords that are potentially related to business recruiting that you could say you could then look through and say okay this is a good keyword based off of search volume based off of the competition score that it gives you and um and then you can categorize those keywords into different like lanes into different series. And, and so if there's something about, um, uh, you know, business recruiting, um, uh, you know, tips or tricks or something like that, then you make a, a series of videos on all of the business recruiting tips that you can provide. And then that becomes, that becomes, uh, the, the business recruiting tips becomes the keyword that you use in each one of those titles. It also becomes the title of the series. And so anytime somebody searches keyword tips, you are more likely to pop up. So another example is um, I'll just talk about one of one of my clients, uh, Roy Ponder. He's uh, he's a self-taught weatherman here local in McKinney. And, um, you know, he's been doing it for like 30 years. He's a phenomenal guy, knows his stuff. But one of the things that that we did with him was um, we said, hey, Roy, who's your biggest competition? Well, it's the Weather Channel, you know, the National Weather Channel. And I said, why don't we do this? Because people are searching for Weather Channel so much. Let's put Weather Channel in every single one of your titles and see what happens. And, uh, and he did that. And after a few weeks, he started really getting some traction. And then after another week, we pulled up the, the keyword Weather Channel. And Roy ranked number one and number two position for Weather Channel. And then the Weather Channel was underneath Roy. So he started ranking. He outranked the Weather Channel just based off of the keywords that he was putting into his titles. But that, that this, again, that's like, that's the strategy that you need to use on YouTube because it's all about search. Um, whereas, you know, some uh, like LinkedIn is all about having as many posts as you can so that you get as much exposure, uh, obviously per, st while still producing value, but you need to have, you need to have uh, placement. You need to have that. Um, you need to have your face in front of people all the time on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram in order for, the algorithms to uh, continue to pick up on you and, and for you to not get lost in the fray of what everybody else is posting. So YouTube search. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I wish, I wish we could, we, we could do, we'll have to do another one of these, maybe do a YouTube channel. Uh, are, are, so here's my question. Are there YouTube videos by the famous Scott Simpson on how to set these things up, how to use vidIQ, um, are those resources available out there for free or do they need to be engaging with you as a coach or consultant, however you best want to put it, uh, to help them build out their YouTube channels? So there, um, that's a good question. So no, not yet. So I, I'm working on a new YouTube channel. Um, actually with my cousin, my cousin is, uh, he, he's got a 
just passed a million subscribers on YouTube and we're building out a whole new YouTube channel based off of training. And, uh, but with, um, with the video marketing world online pass, if, if people want to come to video marketing world online, we are also including in that ticket price access to our entire training series. And so I've got a, um, 145 page 31 days to success on YouTube, uh, workbook that people can use along with training videos. We've got, uh, templates, we've got all sorts of training resources that are included in the price of the, um, the video marketing world online pass. So as an attendee, I will get access to this, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. And you also get access to ongoing monthly live training with them. Um, oh. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I I can't promote attending uh, or not attending. I can't promote not, not attending this conference. Look, you're home. You want to learn something. You want to, you want to beef up your video strategies. You're afraid to go online. You're going to meet or not meet. You're going to listen to people. Uh, I guess you could virtually meet them. Uh, And, and I have an idea for us, Scott, here, which I'll mention and throw it and see if you're down for it. Okay. Um, but if you're, if you're sitting at home and you want to learn about how to do, how to build something out like Scott's talking about on YouTube or what Judy Fox or Fanny Dunnigan or Roger Wakefield or Evan Carmichael and, uh, you know, they're, they're doing some amazing stuff. The number one so, so let me finish my thought here. I'm like ADD all over the place. So basically what you want to do is sign up. So um, if we, if I was to put out a, a link uh, and Fanny, if you're still on, if you could maybe put a link in the comment to register for video marketing world, um, what's the, what's the cost for the online, uh, the online, is it the same as, uh, as, as if you were attending live or no? No, no, not at all. So we have a, a super discount. So the the, t- the ticket prices for live were uh, five ninety seven, um, and then on top of that, if you wanted to add the training into it, it'd been like seven forty nine or seven forty seven. Right. Uh, right now, we're offering the ticket prices at one ninety seven. So obviously, like people are at home, we know that people aren't making money right now. We know that too. So we just wanted to drop the prices and make sure that anybody who wanted to attend could attend so that way the information could get out there and, uh, and everybody could get all of that value at a, at a lower price. So just type in the comments here. I'm, t- I'm adding what the cost is. So you said 197. I want to make sure I get that right. Yeah. 197. Not 199. You just wanted to keep it $3 under 200. I'm just That's kidding. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bargain. It's a bargain. Sign up. It's cheaper. Um, yeah, it's cheaper than that 199 conference down the street, right? <laughs> that's right. So is it is it videomarketingworld.com or no, it? it's uh go.videomarketing.world. But go, but you go. have, you know, Michael's got a special link and um did you get that link? <laughs> yeah, um, I have to look, but I believe I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but uh yeah, D you know, D uh, DM me uh for uh i'll just put can i put that dm me for details absolutely um perfect so just uh yeah so here's my idea here's what i'd like to offer um is it still going to be a two-day event or is it only going to be a one-day event because normally we we added another day it's three days three days all right so is somebody doing like video marketing world after dark or kind of after the, the show ends, is somebody doing that right now? Do you have a, a sponsor? Doing no, that? no, we don't. Yeah, we don't have, you know, it's interesting when, um, um, yeah, we, we have one sponsor right now and that's TubeBuddy and we're super excited to have TubeBuddy. Well, what happened was when we, when we left the live, uh, you know, a lot of our sponsors were like, you know, it's, we're not super comfortable with online and that's okay. That's totally fine. But, um, but TubeBuddy stuck with us. Love TubeBuddy. And, uh, uh, but we don't have anybody like that, Michael. So if you want to do something like that, be more than happy to support that. I would. So we can do it, uh, the first night after day one and then day two would be a virtual, do it through my zoom, 
um, have you on kind of on uh, Owen video. So I'll let you pull your strings because you're tighter with that community. Have them on. We'll recap. We'll have a drink in hand. We'll kind of talk. Um, and it's just a way for us to interact and see people that we haven't seen since the last conference. And I know folks like Judy Fox, who's limiting her travel this year, Denise Allison, who's limiting her travel, mm -hmm. but really nobody can come into the country right now, but uh, uh, unless you're American, but pretty much uh, Denise is from Canada. That's why I said that. But basically <laughs> what you can do is, which she's from Nova Scotia, which is a whole nother country in itself, but basically um, bringing people on so we can see each other and talk to each other. So let's you and I connect after, uh, after this and, um, you know, what I'll do, how many attendees do you have so far signed up? Do you know? We, so we're hoping to have, um, we're hoping to have, uh, five, 500 to a thousand attend the actual event. That's so, awesome. Yeah, last year you were at what? Five, 400, 500. Uh, it was, uh, no, we, we sold out at three twenty. So right, li yeah. it's a lot harder to fit, you know, 300 people into a room. It's a lot easier to fit 300 people into a chat room, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, Zoom allows for that. So yep. Zoom has, uh, if you buy the, it's, I think it's, it goes free. Fourteen ninety nine is the, uh, is the um, 100 participants, and then you can do up to 300 participants. So maybe, you know, we can get a couple of pe people doing doing a couple of these sub subsequently, but um, I'd love to be able to, to, to be a sponsor for that and um, cool. help do that in this way. It just, it just brings the faces together. You know, who's the guy with the orange hair that's from Texas. What's his name? Scott that has the wig. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I dig him and um, but you know, and then maybe Roger can give us some plumbing tips and maybe he'll even sell us some toilet paper. That'll be awesome. <laughs> um, so, but uh, so we're, we're coming up at 41 minutes here or 40, well, almost 42 minutes. So want to be considerate of people's times. Um, you know, any, any other questions? I haven't seen anything come through, uh, but uh, you know, any, any other parting words, final words uh, for our guests on video, if they're apprehensive about trying it? Um, you know, I, I guess I just came across an old Chinese proverb the other day. It's um, the best the best time to plant a tree was yesterday. The second best time is today. So keep that in mind, you know, for all of you people who've been thinking about video, thinking about video, watching people get big on video. It's time to do it. Do it today. Start today. Just start creating and uh, and get your content out there. And then a year from now, you will be. You know, you'll be doing great. You'll be the one that everybody's looking up to and, and saying, man, I wish I would have started when they started. So it started on well, YouTube and on video today. Well, and you bring up a good point because allegedly, and I think because of the pandemic, it's been moved fast forward that if you're not doing video, some, even things like this that we're doing right now, um, that by the time you decide you want to do it, you're going to be too late. And I think by summer, if we're all still stuck inside, um, or at least stuck inside, you know, working uh, remotely, that video will begin to reach its peak sooner than most people predicted, don't you think? Or do you think there's enough room on all platforms for everybody to have a spot on video? You know, I think that now is a phenomenal time to start video. Um, I don't think that with with how many people there are in the world, how many amazing messages people have. I think that the pie ultimately gets bigger. It doesn't get smaller. It doesn't get more crowded. And if it does get crowded, then YouTube finds a way to handle it and to share the wealth, you know, the viewership. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've, I'm a firm believer that, that uh, as the platforms grow, um, there will still be opportunity for people. But the reason it's so powerful right now is because you have this perfect launch pad right? Everybody's at home. You have a captive audience. Start creating content because there are more people online. And so if you start today, you're, you're more likely to launch in a better way than if you start two months from now when everybody's back at work and nobody's focusing on just sitting around watching TV or watching YouTube. Well, and I was talking about this on the uh, with someone the other uh, yesterday that, you know, like HBO, Showtime, Netflix, you'd think they'd start getting creative and put you know, just mix up their shows more, but they're leaving kind of the same shows out there. 
pretty soon that's all people are going to be watching. I mean, I wonder if, do you know if the, 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 what is it? YouTube plus or whatever, where you pay for the YouTube red YouTube red. I mean, yeah. is that, has that gone up a lot in terms of subscriptions? <laughs> do you know? Honestly, uh, I don't, I don't watch any YouTube red, you know, I'm a big time YouTube fan. I have YouTube TV. I don't watch any of the, the paid stuff that they've made on YouTube. Right. I don't even know if they're still doing it. I, that's one side of YouTube that I'm like, I, I just never really touched, but I'm a yeah. huge fan of YouTube TV. Um, and I'm assuming that their, you know, YouTube TV has gone up, but I, you know, I haven't looked at the numbers specifically. Yeah. I was just curious. All right. Well, look, I'm glad to know that you are safe, that your family is safe and healthy and everybody's doing great. And uh, I hope everybody out there watching uh, this live or on the replay uh, is healthy and safe as well. Um, Next LinkedIn Live, and I've been on, I've actually done a a couple of lives this week, so I've been on quite a bit, but uh, I've got the incomparable Judy Fox on on tuesday at lunch and awesome uh, yeah she's going to be amazing and scott you've been an amazing guest um i've really enjoyed i feel like i've kind of learned some things about youtube and uh, i'm definitely going to be following up with you on more stuff i I can wait for the workbook but you know it's always good to have some real live hands-on coaching as well so you'll be getting a phone call later from me on that so thanks very much hey i hope you have a great indoor weekend and uh, with no tv sports or anything on uh, (laughs) but watch youtube go to scott's youtube channel how can they find you scott yeah, so I mean, if any of your if any of your viewers are interested in family videos, then uh, our channel is Scott and Camber, and Camber is like Amber with a C in front of it. So Scott and Camber is our channel, and um, they can catch me on LinkedIn. They can catch me on Facebook. I'm I'm I try to be omnipresent, you know, all over the place. Uh, Twitter starting to resurge on Twitter <laughs> slowly it's, it's- but surely. Yeah, that's well, maybe for another conversation, but um, I'm curious about if Twitter is still kind of the, the thing or if it's kind of dead. Yeah, it's got its crowd. <laughs> yeah, ain't got the ink like the YouTube. Yeah, super that's right. cool. The super cool kids in YouTube. Yeah. Right? <laughs> hey, it's been great having you on. I wish you nothing but the best. And you too. Uh, you and I will be talking soon. I can't wait for video marketing. Where, what's the dates? I forgot to ask. What are the dates again? April 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And the way that we have it set up is we're going to have our presenters present. um, They're they're pre-recording all of their sessions, but they're going to be live in the chat. So when we're, when we're showing their videos, it'll be like a, like a YouTube premiere. People can be live asking questions in real time and it's going to be really fun, super energetic. So highly recommend it for anybody who's interested in learning more video. And I highly recommend it for everybody. For everyone that uh, was on today, Roger Wakefield, Joy Damore out of Philadelphia. Um, who else we had? Fanny. Fanny. Brian, uh, uh, Brian, Brian Fleming. The tool name was VidIQ. Michael Neese. Great question. Appreciate that. And uh, uh, Geraldine Tyne, Cecilia, thank you very much. Everybody have a great weekend. Be safe, be healthy, and we are out of here. Take care, Scott. Thanks, Michael. Yep.